Good. So um, to summarize, I guess, where we stand now. Again, we have our energy balance on the hot fluid. That is Q dot is equal to C dot H times the temperature difference. C dot H is specific heat of hot fluid times mass flow of hot fluid. Q dot is also equal to C dot C, TC out minus TC in. So you have the two different energy balances. You have the third equation here that helps you relate um, you know, the three unknowns that you have. So this is, you know, this is what we did. Remembering again that conductance UA is one over our total. By the way, why do they, why, why is it called UA? It's kind of confusing. So this is um, basically saying that conductance is the product of some effective heat transfer coefficient, which historically was called U, times the area of the heat exchanger. So it's basically the product of a convection or, or total uh, heat transfer coefficient times the area, which again is just one over R total. So that's where it's coming from. So you could theoretically break those apart. Like if you knew the area, you could compute a U, right? And, and it's a meaningful thing. Okay. So um, where to go next? So we, we have this, this equation that we can use, but we don't always want to have like dimensional relationships. Like you don't, let's say, want to always know what the heat transfer coefficient and the the area of your, your devices, you sometimes want to express things in like normalized units um, or, or normal, with normalized expressions. So you might um, want to say, I know that I want my heat exchanger to exchange 80% of the heat that's available to it. Right? That's sort of like an effectiveness, what we call effectiveness or epsilon. I know that my heat exchanger uh, size relative to the heat that's transferred should be a, a certain ratio. Right? That's the number of transfer units. Or I know that the heat capacitance of one fluid is related to another uh, in terms of a capacitance ratio. So if you know those like non-dimensional things, you can really quickly get a handle on the performance of your, your device without actually doing specific like geometry calculations for it. So if you go to the textbook, you know, we went through um, and developed that, that equation. You could take that equation, which we'll do next, and express it this way instead. It's hard to see, but like um, I could say for this is for counter for counterflow heat exchanger. If I want to compute effectiveness, again, I'll define what that means in a second. I could do it with this with this relationship here. Okay, if I know something about capacitance ratio, if capacitance ratio happens to be one, it simplifies to this. So I can get a really simple estimate of the performance this way. You can uh, do the same thing over here, but in reverse. So if you happen to know NTU, you can go backwards. Um, but let's before I talk more about this, kind of give you some definitions to understand these. Um, okay, so first of all, effectiveness. Right, effectiveness, we usually call that epsilon. So what is effectiveness? Effectiveness is the ratio of the heat that's transferred in a heat exchanger to the maximum theoretical heat transfer in that same heat exchanger. So you could go through and compute like what is the, the limit in what this heat exchanger could do if it was um, infinitely long or infinitely large. Uh, that's your maximum heat transfer rate. Um, then you compare the actual to that and that's your effectiveness. So let, uh, just to put that into math, I guess we'd say if effectiveness is equal to Q dot divided by Q dot max. Um, Q dot max is eva evaluated as follows. So Q dot max, uh, you have to look at both of the fluid streams. So we would first look at the cold. So for cold, let's say Q dot is equal to C dot C, T C out minus T C in. Um, what's the maximum, uh, think about it. Actually, let me write the other one. So Q dot for the hot would be C dot H T H in minus T H out. out. So if I had an infinitely long, infinitely large heat exchanger, what is the most uh, that I could uh, say the, the most heat that I could transfer? Well, that would be the cold inlet temperature here. That's the coldest temperature in the system. What's the hottest temperature in the system? It's the hot inlet. So if I had a fluid, if my cold fluid went all the way from cold in to hot out, that's the most heat that I could transfer in the system. 
Likewise, you could do the same thing for the hot, right? The only difference is one of those two flu uh, fluid flows is going to limit the heat transfer based on its capacitance rate. So the one with the lower capacitance rate is going to be the one that would achieve that temperature difference first, right? All things, all other things equal. So we compare these two. We look at which has the lower capacitance rate, and then uh, d uh, calculate the maximum for each flow, and then take the minimum of that, and that gives you your maximum heat transfer. So let me write that out. Right? There's a lot going on there. So here, let's say this would become uh, Q dot max for the cold flow equals um, C dot C times T H N minus T C N. Think about that makes sense. The maximum temperature difference in the system here, limited by how much uh, heat that fluid can take in, C dot C. That's the maximum I could do on C. Same thing for H. So Q dot max H is equal to C dot H uh, times THN minus TCN. So I'm going to get these two estimates. My actual Q dot max, Q dot max here, is going to equal the minimum of Q dot max C and Q dot max H. Okay. I could never exchange more heat than what will get the say, lower capacitance fluid up to the full temperature difference. So that's Q dot max. So now I could say, look, my actual heat transfer and my uh, Q dot max, which I compute this way, and that gives me the effectiveness. Can you just compare the capacitance rates? Yeah, you can. I mean, it, you, you end up, um, yes, you end up doing that. It's, this is just like the long way of writing it. But you are just comparing. So yeah, the next step would be to say um, THNT. Yeah, so you'd end up just saying like Q dot max would be equal to the minimum of uh, C dot C and C dot H times THN minus TCN. Right? That gives you the same thing. Good point. OK, so that, uh, that gives us the maximum. Now our effectiveness would just be effectiveness is equal to uh, Q dot, our actual Q dot, divided by, we'll call this now C dot min. So let's say you know, this, this bit here. Right, this is C dot min uh, times THN minus TCN. Um, OK, what else do we need to know? So I, I gave you that table. We had effectiveness. There is something called capacitance ratio. So capacitance ratio of CR is just uh, C dot min over C dot max. Right, so take the smaller one divided by the bigger one. That's your capacitance ratio. So by definition, is one or less, so between 0 and 1. Um, so you can do the correlations using that. Uh, the other thing was NTU. So NTU, uh, this is a number of transfer units. There's a funny vo vocabulary, but it's saying like it's essentially a non-dimensional size of your heat exchanger. It's like how many units of heat transfer do I have? Okay, number of transfer units. So NTU. Uh, that is defined as conductance, UA, divided by C dot min. So you can start to see there's a bit of like a, I don't know, kind of a dance around this. Like you, you have your effectiveness relationship. You define it this way. You know, you have NTU, you have capacitance ratio. I give you those that table, and you can start to piece them together. To without actually, without actually calculating UA, you can get an estimate of the performance. 
you said.